So in this video, we will talk about the chapter questions and answers for adaptations in plants. We will also look at some additional questions which are not there in the book. We will also talk about the mind map, which will help us to remember the main concepts. So let's start with the mind map. The adaptations in plants are of three broad categories. The adaptations in terrestrial plants, adaptations in aquatic plants, and there are some other special adaptations. Adaptations in terrestrial plants can also be categorized into five different parts, like the adaptations of plants in the polar region, example, Arctic poppy. The adaptations of plants in the mountains and hills, like pine. Adaptations of plants in deserts, like desert spoon. Adaptations in coastal areas, like coconut. And adaptation in swamps and marshes, like mangrove. When we talk about adaptations in aquatic plants, we have the fixed aquatic plants like lotus, floating aquatic plants like pistia, and underwater aquatic plants like hydrilla. The other special adaptations are like insectivorous plants, example pitcher plant. We have the saprophytic plants like the mushroom. All right. Now let's move over to the questions and answers from the book. So let's start with tick the correct answer. Mangroves grow in A. Deserts B. Hills C. Marshy areas or D. Sandy areas. The answer is C. Marshy areas. Next question. Duckweed is a floating plant, B, underwater plant, C, land plant, or D, fixed plant? The right answer is A, floating plant. I hope you got that right. Next question. A cactus plant makes its food in its A, stem, B, leaves, C, flowers, or D, roots. The right answer is A. Stem. Next question. An insectivorous plant among the following is A. Banyan, B. Cactus, C. Venus flytrap, or D. Mango. The right answer is C. Venus flytrap. Great. Now let's do some true or false questions. And if it is a false uh, statement, you have to correct the false statement. The first one, plants that grow on land are called aquatic plants. It's a false statement. Plants that grow in water are called aquatic plants. Right, let's take a look at the next one. A coconut tree has a flexible trunk and large fronds that help it to bear strong winds. This statement is a true statement. Next one. Plants in hilly areas are cone-shaped. This is also a true statement. Next one. In cactus plants, flowers are modified into spines. This is a false statement. In cactus plants, Leaves are modified into spines. Next one. The leaves of the touch-me-not plant release poison when touched. This is a false statement. The leaves of the poison ivy release poison when touched. Right? Now, let's match the columns. We have some items on the column A on the, on the left, and we have some objects on the right. Let's try to match them. The first one is rubber. Rubber is an evergreen tree. It grows in areas with a lot of rainfall. Coconut grows in the coastal plains. Pine has cones. Spongy body will help a plant to float. So it will be a floating plant. And poison ivy is itchy. 
right let's go to the next set of questions you have to give one word answers right plants that grow on land quickly terrestrial plants correct trees that keep replacing their old leaves throughout the year they are called evergreen trees plants that have breathing roots mangroves trees that grow in the hills have these instead of flowers plants in the hills have cones okay an aquatic plant that does not have stomata well the answer is hydrella you can have other examples as well as long as it's an aquatic plant that is underwater plant because underwater aquatic plants do not have stomata write short answers define terrestrial plants plants that grow on land are called terrestrial plants why do the plants in the plains with moderate rainfall shed their leaves in winter plants in areas with moderate rainfall shed their leaves in winter because there is less sunlight and the leaves cannot make food instead the leaves consume the food stored in the body so the trees shed the leaves in order to save food shedding trees also helps the trees to reduce the loss of water got it right why do mangroves have breathing roots mangroves grow in marshy areas where the soil is clayey and sticky the soil is covered with water and the roots do not get air so to get air the roots of mangroves adapt by growing out of the soil and water these roots are called breathing roots how do needle like leaves help the plants in hilly areas in hilly areas water is scarce needle like leaves reduce the loss of water from the plants why do insectivorous plants eat insects insectivorous plants grow in soil that is poor in minerals they feed on insects to get the minerals they need let's go to some long answers how do plants in the hills adapt themselves in order to live in the cold conditions the plants in the hills have the following adaptations their structure is tall straight and cone shaped this shape allows the snow to easily slip off the branches they have thick barks they have waxy needle like leaves to prevent the loss of water and in place of flowers these trees have cones with seeds in them these cones protect the seeds against the cold how does a cactus survive in deserts the cactus plant has the following adaptations to survive in the deserts their leaves are modified into spines to reduce the loss of water the spines also prevent the plant from being eaten up by animals the stems contain chlorophyll and make food for the plant using photosynthesis the stems are waxy to prevent the loss of water their roots are spread out wide to absorb water from a large area what are the features of fixed plants that help them to live in water the fixed aquatic plants have the following features to help them to live in water their roots are fixed in the mud they have broad flat leaves which help the plants to float on the surface of the water the large leaves also help to prepare food for the plant using photosynthesis they have hollow and flexible stems which allow the plants to bend with the flow of water next question how does the poison ivy protect itself from being eaten by animals the poison ivy plant has poison in it if an animal touches it the poison will make the skin itch explain how a venus flytrap traps an insect the venus flytrap has leaves that are folded into two halves the leaves have hair along the edges when an insect sits on a leaf and touches its hair the leaf closes instantly trapping the insect now think and answer 
What will happen if a cactus does not have spines? Well, if a cactus does not have spines, it will lose a lot of water through evaporation if it has broad leaves. The plant will also be eaten up by animals. What will happen if plants that grow underwater have broad and flat leaves? If underwater plants have broad and flat leaves, they will be uprooted by the flow of water and they will not be able to survive. Now let's look at some additional questions and answers. Define habitat. The natural home of an animal or plant is called its habitat. Define adaptation. The structural or, or behavioral modifications of an organism which enables them to survive better in their habitat is adaptation. Choose the odd one out with reason. Venus flytrap, water hyacinth, duckweed and pistia. The odd one is Venus flytrap. It is an insectivorous plant whereas others are floating aquatic plants. Differentiate between submerged and fixed aquatic plants. So for differentiating questions, you should put it in a table format. You should have two columns. On the left, we have fixed plants. On the right, we have underwater submerged plants. So fixed plants get adequate sunlight as sunlight reaches the bottom of ponds and lakes. For underwater submerged plants, these plants grow in very less light as not much sunlight reaches the bottom of seas and oceans. For fixed plants, the leaves float on the surface. For underwater plants, the leaves remain submerged underwater. For fixed plants, stomata is present on the upper side of the leaf. For underwater or submerged plants, the leaves are without stomata. Example of fixed plants are lily and water, water lily and lotus. Example of underwater or submerged plants are hydrilla and tape grass. How can duckweed choke aquatic animals? Duckweed are free-floating aquatic plants. They can reproduce at a very high speed, choking aquatic life by preventing oxygen and light from entering the water. What are xerophytes? Why is the stem of cactus green in color? A xerophyte is a species of plant that has adaptations to survive in an environment with little liquid water. The plant's stem is transformed into a flat, green, fleshy structure that aids in water storage and photosynthesis. Example is a cactus plant. Now, cactus stems are fleshy and green because they contain chlorophyll to prepare food for the plant using photosynthesis. They store water for the plant and hence appear fleshy. Great. So hopefully, we have been able to help you to prepare better for this chapter, Adaptations in Plants. Please read the chapter thoroughly and then try to answer the questions one more time on your own. Thank you and we will see you in the next video.